I think so, no? It's 2.01 yes, already. Yes, you're right. We are. We are. We should start. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back for this WDC Zoominar for another, I am sure, fantastic, tremendous lecture today. So please join me in welcoming Barbara McCall, the greatest teacher, the greatest woman ever. Thank you. Thank you. And... Thank you to the WDC for this invitation to lecture to you today. At this point, I would like to welcome you all to my own personal Zoom room, where I have been spending many of my hours in here helping students develop and continue with their progress during these difficult times um, of COVID. My subject today is actually very personal to me, uh, the importance of legs and feet. And when I was at the age of eight, I didn't realize how important they were going to be and have become in who I am today. From the age of eight, I used to spend hours developing, working, trying to understand what more I could get out of my legs and my feet. And in my own little way, I must have done something right because I believe that is why I am here today, able to continue to move, to do movement because of the stability that I developed in those early years. I believe that from the understanding of what your feet and legs should do. It gives you the ability and the possibility to have musical timing of clarity. And then this will allow the artistry and indeed the design of your performance to be released. The overall production of any performance depends on the balance that comes from your feet. Through the development and the correct usage of legs from the feet, we allow ourselves the freedom and the ease for movement. So first, I have to look at the feet. Before I even understand how to use the feet, I have to build strength in my foot. I have to provide supple and supported feet that allow me to have the sensitivity to use my feet. I believe that feet should caress the floor. Feet should be like our eyes seeing the floor and like our fingers touching and feeling the floor, feeling our way through movement. They should be able to support your body, depending on how big or how small or how heavy or how light. Your feet should have the support built into them and they should be strong enough. They should be strong enough to keep you going. For example, if you want to dance a competition that is six rounds in duration, your feet have to keep going. You've got two minutes of dance, 10 minutes a round, six rounds, 60 minutes where you want your feet to be able to keep supporting the weight of your body in movement and in stillness, in flight, coming back to stillness. So I cannot stress enough the importance at the development of the muscles of the feet. So today I have made up four little exercises that I believe start that process. I'm just going to run through them very quickly with you. And the first one is actually quite a comical sight that we see when we go to beaches. 
we see everyone putting down their little towel and getting ready to sunbathe. So the difference is we put our foot on the edge of the towel and all we do is we eat the towel. We scrunch and scrunch and scrunch and scrunch and scrunch and keep that towel coming in to the foot. Now, this is a no-brainer exercise. It's not even difficult to do, but you can feel as you pull and claw that towel into your feet, you're starting to wake up the muscles, the ligaments, the nerve endings inside of your foot. And trust me, if you get into a habit of doing this, Every day, at least five times per foot, you start to wake up the arches, the use of the foot. Very, very easy to do. An exercise that I would recommend is done on a daily basis. Another exercise, pressing onto the ball of the foot. Putting a little bit of weight into the ball of the foot, you start to feel the top part of your foot being used you start to feel compression into that foot. Then once you roll that foot over, you start to feel the under part of your arch, sometimes going into cramp. But you start to stretch and bend those feet so that you start to create a supple position, a supple understanding of the foot. Lifting the toes up high, keeping the heel on the floor. You start to develop an awareness and a pickup of your arch because some people have flat feet. And if you've got flat feet, these exercises will for sure start to do that for your feet, development of your feet. Again, everything that you do to the right, you do to the left. Another exercise, I've been doing a lot of cooking whilst I've been here in lockdown. You take the rolling pin or any bottle or roller inside edge of your foot, releasing the tone and the tension that you've just done through the stretching exercise. Then of the whole of the foot, making sure, again, do it for as long as you can. Don't just so quickly do it and I've done it to get onto the practicing of your choreography. Outside edge, being careful. You start to feel different parts of the foot. And again, with the left, you do with the right. And the last, but not the least important of the exercises, standing on your feet, allowing yourself to go back to the heels of your feet. And try not to lose balance as I just did. Heels, flat, and up to the tops of the toes, taking little tiny steps forward and little tiny steps back, just to waken up the feet, the use of the ankles, the tibia, the fibia, the calves, and then indeed it will go up to the quadricep. It will go up to the hamstring, and it will reach your all important glute. Quadriceps, hamstrings, glutes, all important in how we then use our leg. So if we want to do a pickup in the leg, we can use these muscles that we start to bring alive through leg exercises, which we'll come on to when we get to the leg department. So remembering at all times, through the development and correct usage of your legs and your feet. You will allow yourselves the freedom and therefore ease of movement will come out. You need to get to know the different parts of your foot. These exercises are to develop your foot, but having an awareness of the foot. Now I know everybody knows about feet. Oh, there's the heel and there's the toe and, and there's the bit in the middle. It's not enough to know that. Even taking yourself a diagram of a foot, easy as it may seem, a heel, 
an arch, an, a ball, inside ball of foot, the whole ball of foot, the toes. We have to understand even the seam where the toes reach the ball of the foot. We have to understand and start to really get to know this foot because we are asking the foot to do many different things. Because when we come to our all important technique, which by the way, I believe, and I do know for sure, the BLT, the Burns Latin Technique book is coming out very shortly. Quick advertisement slot for that. Be sure to buy it. It will explain all the different parts of your foot. There will be so much information. You won't even begin to believe it. So watch out for that BLT, Burns Latin Technique. Your technique book tells you which part of the foot you should be using, whether it's a ball, whether it's an inside edge, whether it's a flat, whether it's a ball to flat. Understanding all that is your way forward. If you don't know about it, then you are literally searching around in the dark. So as I put my shoes on, I want you to be aware when you have a straight foot that goes in any one direction, the straight foot tells the knee, aligns the knee, which direction it's to go. By aligning the straight foot in the correct direction, the knee is correct, which allows then the hip to swing in the direction you want it to swing. If your knee is in the wrong direction because your foot has turned out accidentally, then the hip actually stops swinging. So your importance of understanding that technique, when I go forward on a continuous forward rumble walk, my feet are not turned out. This is not a continuous forward walk. I have to be very careful. I'm taking a straight foot forward. The knee is going in a straight direction. A continuation of movement is going to happen as I move from my back foot into my forward foot, my knee bends. As my knee bends, my hip starts to naturally swing to the side. I then continue with the elevation from the standing foot by lifting up my standing heel. Not to have, let me just move that camera a little bit, not to have head rise, but to actually absorb that movement in a forward direction which is going to put me onto the front foot, which is going to allow that knee to bend, which is going to allow the natural pendulum hip swing of my hip. If I'm going to do turned out feet on a forward walk, I end up looking a little bit like a chicken. However, once I've completed my forward walks and I want to change my direction, that's when the all-important turnout of, of the foot arrives. Check, turn the foot out, sends a message to the brain. Uh-oh, something has changed. You're right, bend the knee. There is still some sort of hip movement, but it's not this hip movement, which is very, very easy and swinging. It is, a movement that tells the body, you can go forward a bit, but I'm already on my way back. And then the same with backward walks. All too often, we see people doing this, and they have to, they don't realize that they're actually taking the foot outside to take the foot behind, because they have too much turnout on the backward walk. So the point being, when you do, the practice, the proper practice, the preceding practice before that competition, 
you need to understand that when you're doing it slowly, you might feel that your feet are actually, I feel my feet turned in too much. That's fine. Because when you've got momentum, when you've got swing through the body, well, there will be a slight opening. But if you already start with your feet too much open, then the whole, the whole system falls down. I don't know if you can remember the, you know, the, the, the little instrument where you've got a little machine and you've got a set of hanging balls. And you pull one ball and it naturally clicks to the next ball, which clicks to the next ball, which clicks to the next ball, and then it returns and it returns and it returns. This will keep going. Uh, something about physics and everything like that. But that's what happens to our body. If our feet are in the right position, the right direction, our knee will be in the right direction. Our hip will swing the amount that we want it to swing. Our body will have the action of being able to move forward through space. When we check that foot, then immediately a signal is received change direction. So again, the importance of the direction of your feet. Unbelievable. So we talked about building strength in the feet, understanding which part of the foot is important to be used. When it's important to be used, that brings us to our musical timing of the foot. Which part of the beat do we want that part of the foot to be on? If we really get to understand that, so digging deep into our musical timing, digging deep into our technique books and not using the, not being frightened to use the technique book, by the way, BLT, not being frightened to use the technique book, book as a Bible at first, and then once you know it all, then you can develop it. But there's no point in developing something that you don't already know. So we've talked a little bit about feet. We've talked a little bit about exercise, development of the feet. We've talked how important it is to understand when you're using your foot, which part of the foot, and of course, in, in one hour, we can't talk about every single step because you've still got to get onto the legs. After we've talked about the legs, we'll try and give some examples. Again, the leg. So we've got the feet and of course, learning the balance on the feet. We've got that. Now we've got the leg. What's the difference of the leg? Oh, okay, we're gonna have a straight leg, we can have a bent leg. That's pretty much it. However, there's degrees of a straight leg. For example, if you're like me and you have a hyper extended leg, I have to know how much time I need to get from that hyper straight locked position to then straight to then bent. It might be that I don't go to my maximum hyper locked position because what does that do to my body? It makes my body drop. If you can see, there's the straight. If you can see, there's the hyper. It might be that I only use that hyper if I'm going in to some sort of delicious styling of a fan but I have to know how to unhyper my leg, if that makes sense. So here we are, hyperextended leg. Looks as if I'm almost falling off my foot. Back to the foot. That hyperextended leg will take me to the outside edge, as you can see the outside edge of my foot. No, it's not gonna do that. So I need to understand how to, this small, tiny little action, outside edge, rolling, watch it by magic, using the internal aspects of my feet. I have now 
straightened myself, still in a locked position, but I'm not dropped. So understanding what is a locked leg, then what is a straight leg, then even understanding what's a straightening leg, and what is a dropped straight leg. I mean, here we've got four different versions of a straight leg, instead of just, yep, yeah, your leg is straight, yep, yeah, your leg is bent, not so. What is a bent knee? Oh, well, a bent knee is when it's not straight. Oh, right, okay. So, a bent knee. A bent knee is a direct, an intended direction of that knee. So, I am now going to intentionally bend, put my knee into a forward, forward position. I am moving my knee into a forward position. And now it's bent. If I just bend my knee, can you see? The center of my whole core looks as if it's dropped through the floor. Bend the knee, oh, oh, center's gone through the floor. And then the teacher will say something like, oh, you look as if you need to pick up your center. Oh, I'll pick up my center. Now my back stiff. Now, now I'm losing balance. No, 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 no. Bending of a knee. Send that knee in a forward direction. When I want to straighten that leg, I pull the knee back. I pull the knee back. And as I pull the knee back, the other leg moves. Quite like magic. Because, uh, duh, they're connected by this thing called the hips in the middle. So what I do with one side of the body, what I do with one side of the legs, actually can affect the other, and more often than not, does affect. I can choose to interrupt that effect. I can choose to go into my forward bending knee, my knee going in a forward direction, and I can say, no, I'm going to go in another direction. So, I change the direction of my knee. That normally causes my back foot to come alongside the forward knee that was already in the forward direction that now I've changed into a backward direction. And this understanding of the knee changing its direction allows and assists with the correct understanding of bounce because we don't want to see a bouncing samba where we have actual head elevation above height. It actually can allow the knee to go forward and use the knee and there was use of the knee because I changed the direction of my knee to then allow this other leg to come out at the same time using articulation of foot. So again, understanding the direction of the legs, what they're doing. An error that we see all too often, all too often. Promenade run. Step one of a promenade run. What's wrong with that? Okay, so my foot has turned to the wall. I'm actually going diagonally forward. And my knee is also going to the wall, but I'm intending to go diagonally forward. Well, then this has to be the action. And this is all too often promenade run, promenade run, promenade run. And it looks as if we're, we're lugging a bad leg. And that's all because the study, the direction, the intention that that individual is looking to do. I'm intending to go diag to the corner. Okay, so if you're in, it is not fulfilled. So I'm intending to go diag to the corner, I must go diag to the corner with my foot, with my knee, 
with my knee direction, sending it over there, and then pulling it back to do the next step. There is a change of knee direction, even on a promenade run. There is a change of knee direction in a jive. You have your one, two, change the knee. One, two, change the knee direction. Even at the end here, there is a rolling of the knee. Boom, yaka da da. Boom, ba ya. See that? So I've gone from a bent knee and it's gone underneath me, which sends the body in a forward falling direction. So as you can see, from the result of direction, understanding of my legs, mechanical movement of my legs, stability, support, balance of my feet, I can do, oh, yak da da yak da oh, yak da I can do everything that I want to do. I can design my work. All too often we see shapes like these, which are fabulous, but not understood. So I'm going into a forward, sit, and then all too often, stand up and walk away into the next movement. Where was the completion of the leg? A few years ago, we had the, um, the lecture in, in the wonderful Assen, where we talked about the use of the standing leg. This is exactly the understanding of it. The use of it, sitting, finishing it, before we then change our mind and go into another step. Oh, but I've not got enough time. Take the time, make the time, sit into that beautiful figure, finish that beautiful figure with the detail, the direction change of that knee, which then beautifully shows the moving leg and then move on. Understanding, understanding what the legs and feet are supposed to do what you want them to do and then building within the legs and the feet the support mechanism the muscles that are going to be able to allow you to be keeping your body moving to be keeping dancing on that competition floor for the hour if it's six rounds for the hour that you're trying to dance. Because if you don't have that support, these are the reasons why we hear the couple say, it's just not the same when I get on the competition floor, I'm stressed, I haven't got the energy. And then they worry about their stamina and I, I can't keep going. And, and, the, and the connection that worked so fabulously in the studio and the girl felt that man Oh, it was deliciously connecting with her, sensitively allowing her to do all the moves that she's been practicing. Get on the competition floor, go, go for it, feet get tired, end of. End of story. Might be the reason you don't make the semi-final. Because your feet were only able to last three rounds. So in the fourth round, you were dead. And then you go back to the teacher for the review and the teacher says I thought you died a bit and then everybody starts oh, I've got to get to the gym I've got to get motivated I've got, to, I've got to go out running I've got, to, I've got to, yeah you can do all those things but in simple terms activate strengthen your feet it is a no-brainer if your feet are not strong enough to keep going for at least one hour You've got no chance. Why is it that in the beautiful world of the classical ballet, they spend hours, hours, la, da, da, what's all that about? Because when you put that foot out, there's the tone, there's the arch lifted, 
there is this strengthening exercise. And then you go into the next one. Then you do it with the lift, swinging to develop, learning how to lift the leg and maintain balance. Because this quadricep is heavy. So if you don't have the swing from the glute, if you don't and have not built the, um, what do we call them, the hamstrings, then you haven't got the availability that you need of your legs. So we have quadricep, quadricep strengthening exercises. Easy, sitting on a floor, very quickly, showing you the most simplest exercise in the world. Doesn't take minutes to do. Hold on to your knee, lift, and you'll feel the tightening of the quadricep. Hold it there. You'll start to feel it shake a little bit. Put it back down. You know, do 10 of them. Hold them for five seconds. Easy peasy. The other leg, turn over, lying down on the floor. Hamstring pulls. When I tore for my cartilage, I had to do 300 hamstring pulls with a little ankle weight on my ankle to strengthen the hamstring and stretch the quadricep to keep the muscles good to support the knee. So we've all done it. We've all done it for different reasons. And this is why we're having the lecture at today discussing the importance of legs and feet. Because it's not just about getting up and doing those rumble walks for hours. What happens if you're doing them wrong? And there you are, you're walking around the studio five hours later and you haven't improved a thing. But you feel good because you feel you've done something. No point. You've got to get in that studio. Stay in your bedroom if you want. We're all on lockdown, some of us in different countries. Stay in your bedroom. Do your feet exercises. You could be doing that foot exercise for an hour. All right. That'll make a big difference. Do it for an hour and in a week, you'll have a completely different stability. Even your posture will change if you change your feet. Then you do your leg exercises. That could be another hour. Wow. Now, when I'm actually calling on that leg, to do something, you know what? It does it because the muscle is ready. And before you know it, a week later, when you can get back in a studio, oh my goodness, you feel, you feel superhuman. And you actually think, you know what? Having that lockdown has given me a, a, a reason and it's given me time to approach my dancing from a different point of view. Because all too often, with all the wonderful, wonderful competitions all around the world today, we finish one comp, we change a little bit of something because I haven't got time to change it. I've got comp next week. So within that week, what did you develop? What did you strengthen? And then you're, you're already stressed. You're already stressed before you even go into the competition. You haven't changed a thing. You haven't looked deeply enough. So believe me, I believe that this time, not that I appreciate COVID-19, but this situation has caused each and every one of us to adapt, to go deeper into our subject. Even in my Zoom room, I come in here, I'm, I'm using, you, you saw today I started the, the lecture without my shoes on. I was already doing those leg exercises because I want to be uh, positive. I want to give you a good delivery of my subject. Even doing these leg exercises, the foot exercise, it strengthens, it gives control, support to the voice. And so the whole, every single part of me is ready. I'm, ex I'm excited to talk to you all. 
Instead, oh, didn't do my exercises yet. Today we're going to talk about legs and feet and the importance of legs and feet. And I start talking drab and, and then I come off after the lecture and I'm disappointed. Could have done better. Get the feet alive. Get the legs alive. Make sure you know which part of the foot you're stood on. So with that little bit of excitement, <laughs> I do get carried away sometimes. So here we have it. I thought I would give you uh, three examples in a cha-cha, because all too often, uh, when we talk about legs and feet, everybody thinks of the rumba. Now, I love my rumba. I love it. So I'm going to start with cha-cha. Not because I don't like the cha-cha, but I think that is the dance that we start with. We go on the floor, and there's our cha-cha. So if you don't have a good delivery of the cha-cha, chances are, you won't get looked at in the samba. And, uh, and they're, oh yeah, but they're waiting for the rumba because your rumba's a great dance. So, cha-cha, here we go. The importance of my foot in a cha-cha. So easy. I have learned I must be flat on the beat of four. <laughs> so easy. I must be flat. Not flattening. Not rolling, unless I'm changing and doing a more um, American style, Marangi style, Cuba cha-cha, where I, where I want to actually change the action. My cha-cha starts on the beat of one with my standing foot activating and lifting the heel, the, the heel of the standing foot, and boom. So from the knee, there is the sharpness. My leg's not tense. I'm not one, and my whole body's tense because my teacher said I had a straight leg. No, no, no. I just do one, and it goes there, and it's on the beat, nice and easy. The direction of the foot, you will see, is going slightly diagonal. That's my intention, because as I do a slightly diagonal foot, it causes a slight rotation of the shoulders. I'm trying to get the whole of me in, so I just need to put that down a little bit. So, a slight rotation of the shoulders. There's my one. And then I change my direction, so I actually feel, look, instead of doing one, two, three, where I've got flat shoulders, side step, side step, flat shoulders, check, a uh, little bit, little bit um, youthful in its appearance. Um, I want to show a little bit more flavor, a little bit more conviction that I know what I'm doing. So there's my one and one flat foot, shoulder slight turn. Even when I'm holding a girl's hand, even one when I'm holding a boy's hand. And then there's a rotation of the shoulder to go in a backward direction for the girl or to go in a forward check for the man. So as I say, forward check. One, bring the inside edge of the foot in, which allows the knee to bend and change that direction of the foot. And change that direction of the foot. No problem. I'm not going anywhere. I've stopped. My girl is over there. I'm supporting myself and I'm supporting my girl. Return, rondé chasse. How do I do a rondé chasse? I have to lift weight out of my standing foot. I have to be able to turn on the ball of my foot. Two, three, rondé cha cha. One, two. You see, you thought maybe I was going to go into a time step. Change my mind. In. In, back, straight leg, straight arrival, straight on my beat, forward. Then I might do another chasse, twisting chasse. So again, twisting chasse. You'll notice in my Zoom room, it's big enough to do all this. Instead, one, two, three, cha-cha, one, and we're all over the place, and we've lost that beautiful rotation, twisting of the body. So we've actually lost the sense, the essence of the cha-cha because my feet went too big, my size of step went too big. 
So now I want to keep under my body, do my movement, one, and one, check on two, return three, roll to chassis, one, two, back step, three, twist chassis. Now, here after my twist, I'm going to go into another checking movement, which we all have in our routines, Ronde chassis, boom! I want this to be a big step because I'm going into a contained Cuban break. Again, Cuban break. There's my forward check. Cuban break. Turned out foot. Leg traveling diagonally across the standing leg. Check. Look at the back foot. It hasn't moved. And I could sit here forever because I built the strength in my back foot to support that high elevated position that I want the world to see. And I am completely balanced on my checking foot, which provides a locked leg. So there you are. I use my locked leg because I want to drop into that Cuban break. If I don't have that ability or availability, then I go like this, and my weight has gone too far forward. I've had too much rise out of my back foot. I'm now on my big toe. No, I want to be on the ball, the crease of my toes with a hyper extended leg, which then puts the hip exactly where I want it. And then I return. And then I go back in. And of course, changing to the other side. These are in my checking warm-up exercises, guys. I check this before I go into my routines, just to make sure, yeah, foot, do you know where you're going? Yeah. Leg, do you know what you're doing? Yeah. Ball, do you know what you're doing? Heel, do you know to get up off the floor? Yeah. I'm having a little conversation with me. Nobody else here, just me. So that's what I do. Check in here, then okay. I'm going to go now into this delicious step. You notice my foot already knows where it's going. I'm turning. I'm going into a New York check. Off I go. Oh. Wow, you can't imagine the information that I hear how to do a New York check. I've got to, and I'm not saying anyone's wrong. People use different parts of their body to get them there. But all too often, I, I, and I love, I love the boys very much, but all too often the boys look fantastic in a New York check and they've left the girl behind. So then we start dealing with connection. No, 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 no. You worry about your feet. I'll worry about my feet. You get to where you're going and boom, forward check, flat foot, straight leg, ball of foot. You might decide to arrive and then do one of those wiggly, 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 shaky exercises and then go into a ronde. Fine. But if you go on the wrong place, wiggly, 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 and my body weight is in the wrong place, so I'm having trouble standing up. And I'm not saying it's just the boys that do that. The girls can do that. So then you're pulling on your partner more because your weight was in the wrong place as you're trying to do that. You're pulling on the partner more. That partner's having to rebalance themselves. And now one of you, is late doing the ronde. Now you might not have a ronde after, I'm just using these as examples. So I go into my check, first of all, as a male, cha cha one or uh, from a traveling warmer. So I've got, for example, a twist chassis maybe, and I'm already going there. I'm not twist chassis, checking, looking at my partner to having the foot side. My foot knows I'm going there. It's gone. Because the foot has had its work done on it. I've studied the technique. Oh, BLT, there it is again. I've studied the musical timing. 
I studied, prepared my strength in my foot. I studied my legs, my feet in still movements and in flight. Here's an in flight movement. And cha cha one check. You'll see, I arrive, boom, I nail that foot flat to the floor. Not a problem. Now I can go into woo, the chip chap. And again, there's another check. But that check might be a forward check because I might want to use a slightly different flavor from the shoulder. But if I don't know what a check is, if my legs are not working, if my feet have not been prepared, I'll have no opportunity to bring a different, a different sense, a different styling, a different personality, a different dynamic change. Wow, that word dynamic is crept into the dancing. Believe me, I love the word. But when I was young, it was in and out, up and down. Uh, big and small, it was, a, it was a different set of words. And now if you use those words, you might be considered to be simplistic in your delivery or simplistic in your knowledge. Now, nothing changes. Words might change, but nothing changes. If I want to go up, I need to know how to elevate through my foot. I need to know how to rise. If I want to turn, I need to know. If I want to create dynamic changes, I need to know how to do all that. If I want to go over there, and then I want to go over there, I need to know how to do that. And even when I stop, what position do I want my feet and legs in when I stop? All of these things come from the development, the correct usage of legs and feet, which allows us and gives us the freedom to have this amazing individuality. I remember Sammy and Donnie doing the interview for the Burns Latin Technique. What was the, what do you think was missing in today's dancing? Individualism. This individuality, you don't just go out and buy it in a shop. It comes from what you're doing with your feet, what you're doing with your legs. Understanding, we don't want a stiffness, we want ease of movement, but you've still got to go through the mechanical movement of a bend in a straight, changing direction of leg. You've still got to do all these things, but not necessarily are you showing us that you've done it. So again, this is all understanding. Another one that's a real, um, a, a real favorite of mine. Um, I don't think I always, I often used it uh, in when I was competing, but I knew of it. Uh, is a delayed walk. Now, a delayed walk. If I'm standing ready to do a basic, and the man comes to me, my foot. I'm standing. Excuse me, I'm standing on my leg, not in my leg. I often see waiting, the, the, the girls unfortunately look as if they're um, parked, waiting maybe for a better day to come along. And then they try and move this leg underneath their body without actually doing anything. I sit on, stand on my leg, my standing foot. Now I have the space to easily move my leg under my body. A delayed back walk means exactly that. I am delaying time. Delaying time that I, the woman, independent, yes, that's another lecture, power of the woman, Independent woman, I'm delaying the time that I'm moving away from my man because I want to flavor and experience his masculinity and his delicious smell. So I'm delaying my departure. Okay, let's put it like that. So here we are. A delay means borrowing time, using time longer here so I don't have so much time over there. 
delayed back walk. Man comes to me. Wow. Then I take that energy. Now, I had no time to stop for coffee. Back walk in place. I did not drop onto that heel, drop the hip, bend the knee, then move my back basic. Because now my partner is going to be screaming at me, you're late, you're late. Don't want that. So, delayed back walk. Sense, feel his masculinity. Then, excuse me, get the hell out of there. Wafo. And now I can stand on this leg. I'm not in it, I don't drop. I stand on it. I have to collect, receive that energy. So I've gone point back with my toes, not my inside edge of toe, with my toes. Now get on it, get off it, collect. And then what you will actually be doing is as you start to move forward, boom, back. So there is a collection, a holding up, and then release to move. And that's when we see the activation of the hip. It's not on the backward movement. Because look, I've dropped my center again. I've dropped my core. No good. I'm actually pulled up. And then as I come forward to it, I'm already on my forward part of my journey. And then the hip gets left behind. I won't be seeing it, but I'll feel it. And the man, oh, he'll love it. So again, a delayed walk. Another one of my uh, things that I had to learn, things that didn't come easy naturally, we've still got time, I can see, things that didn't come easy and naturally to me. If I let you into a secret, I actually hated the jive, hated it. Now. Why did I hate it? Because when I was 15 and I was developing, you know, through the ages of uh, 12 and 15, the puberty years, and um, my body grew, yes? When I did the jive, certain parts of my body jumped up and down, and I disliked it. So I didn't jump in jive. I took, uh, I just took it out. Uh, maybe, maybe even then I was understanding what swing was, because I didn't jump, but of course, got this very uh, successful opportunity to dance with Mr. Sammy Stockford, now MBE, and I had to learn how to jive. So what did I have to learn how to do? I had to, first of all, not be embarrassed with certain parts of my anatomy to move up and down. I had to be able to do all that, but I had to learn the feet. What was going on with the feet? Because if you couldn't tell me what was going on with the feet, forget it. I, I, I wasn't going to be part of it. So. I always knew that there was a rotation, okay, and a lift. But then that wasn't just the only way to do this whisk. There was how one. There was a flip flop change, a flip flop change, a flip flop change. Notice what I'm doing. Forward and back with my knee, a little slip. So as I do this, I have to learn that slip. Now, am I slipping on a flat foot or am I slipping on a ball? Am I slipping on the balls of my feet? What action, what action do I want to produce? What style do I want to show? I need to know all these things, but the first thing I had to do was make sure that this foot could do this little slip. Now, you will see that that's a jive. You don't even need to hear any music. So the slipping of the foot, becomes important. And then when I realized, oh, that's a slip of a foot. Where else can I use that? Hmm, I can use that in a stationary samba walk. Right, okay. So I had to learn normal samba walk, change weight, put foot back, all too often we see this, knees opening, put the foot back. Oh, oh, here's a little slip. Close, slip, close, and boom, boom, chuck a boom, boom, chuck a boom, boom, chuck a boom, boom, chuck a boom. Notice, toes are going back, 
not inside edge, toes. Knee is changing. Oh, check a ball. This gives a lovely, lovely, delicious action to the pelvic floor. Oh, it feels, I mean, if you could do this for hours, it just feels great. So it starts to internalize and wake up the internal senses, which then add to the overall design of what we're doing. So of course, this is my, this is my subject. I have loved it all my life, all my dancing life. I've loved the subject of legs and feet. So when I was asked to deliver some information to you on the importance of the legs and feet, I hope, I really hope that I have been able to convey to you the importance of the legs and feet because for me it's everything. It's the foundation of my dancing. And again, it has kept me able to move to this day. So I believe that's our time up, ladies and gentlemen. It has been my absolute pleasure to visit with you today from my Zoom room and give you some aspects to help in the development of your dancing. Thank you to the WTC for putting on these, I believe, 40 lectures for all their members to come and view and to learn from. Great opportunity for all of you guys. And as I said, my favorite subject, the importance of legs and feet. Thank you to you all.